don't even know what that means. It's it's, I, it's not even it's not real. I don't think. But <laughs> no, no, that's a, that's a word. That, that word. <laughs> um, uh, Captain Stanley at this point is falling apart. You get to see more of a uh, more of a good performance by uh, Ray Winstone here. Um, but what I wanted to bring out, I think we every we we get to see all three of them, as you said, when Martha breaks down, you know what? We don't need to reiterate. You already said it. Uh, let's bring up, let's bring something to the show that I didn't bring to your show. Uh, you know, everybody keeps mentioning they want to fuck Martha. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. That's the, I, it got to the point where I was like, I think this is the third scene where everybody said they wanted to fuck Captain Stanley's wife. And again, I didn't know how to shoehorn that into your show, but that's, that's a thing. That's real. We, we, we kind of talked about the what's around that, though, is that she's one of the rarities of a woman being in the bush and being, you know, this kind of the, the idea we talked about the house, the house that she lives in is kind of an act of defiance against the, the wills of nature, that that is the attitude of I will civilize this place that her husband has. But her being there is also a defiance. Like, you know, she's not supposed to be there. Right. And right. and um, the fact that she's at the whim of desire and, and everybody's gross um, – ogling and and reductivism like that 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 says a lot i mean we we talked a, a, around that but we didn't mention that specifically <laughs> no we we i dumb it down for the audience here you you I mean, different different places. You know, you got you got a lot of learned people on your side of the world. I, the these kids, they don't know, and that's okay. You know, they they I get feedback all the time. You made me feel stupid and worthy at the same time. I appreciate you. So, I, but that's it's just another awesome layer. There is also something you mentioned there. The the mention there, just um, their their home. I love how we go out of our way to civilize this land, their garden, their front yard that they have in this just, mm -hmm. it's just another layer of the film that you're just like, of, of course they would. And I mean, not only would the characters do that, but also just kind of like we're taken over as us whites tend to do, you know, <laughs> it's just a yeah, yeah. great part, a great aspect of the film. So yeah, like the garden, the garden is kind of changing the terrain yeah, against the yep. will of the be of, of who, who this land belongs to. It's a forceful transition and it, it, there's so much symbolism to it. You might miss that just because the movie is not like on the nose in this way. It is a, a poem and a scathing poem about what is at the heart of, of what's transpiring in this, this, uh, violent west this violent terrain and what that is and uh you 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 have to give it credit for for having the visual illusions yeah yeah and uh you know what let's talk about uh we'll, we'll talk about the part in the film that i don't like and that's a lie oh and by the way i want to have it on the record somewhere I do think, and this is only an inside joke for Kyle and I, but I do think that Charlie struggles with his decision to kill his brother. <laughs> I just, I'd like to have that on record somewhere that I do, I don't think it's, I, I, you could, you could argue in favor that he just knows that he's got to kill his brother and that needs to be the end of it and that he always, he always, always knew that he was going to do it, but in multiple times watching this, I'm like, he's really conflicted. But I went on Kyle's show, and you'll have to stay tuned. And I said differently. <laughs> I, I think you, I think you said it both ways. I think there was one moment that you're remembering that you said it differently. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, Lamb finds uh, Jillian Lamb. John Hurt finds Charlie. Um, and I, I only bring this up. Uh, to talk about the part in the film that I don't. John Hurt gets shot. We hear gunshot in the distance. Now, this is more for Kyle and me just having fun with Kyle and not caring about you, but I don't know how well you maybe or how close you may have been watching for something as silly as this, but so the, the gunshot sounds from quite a ways away, correct? That kills yeah. John Hurt? Yes, quite quite a while. So when you see 
Arthur and uh, who's what's the partner's name again? Arthur and not Two Bob. Two Bob was Captain Stanley's partner. The the other guy just a chest full of bullets. Anyway, his Aboriginal friend were with him. Arthur and his friend. Now, if you look when they're walking in, there's no way that John Hurt could have got shot, and that's just me <laughs> nitpicking. Like if you look at the location in terms of the context of his exit it i don't know i i think i've just seen the film too much <laughs> um but when they they come around the corner and you, and you have to go back and watch this and you just have to text me and be like yeah where where did that shot come from like it's uh, it sounded from there's no way visually the, it, it's just visually out of context there's again it's a movie i don't it it still is awesome it plays well for me and of course the we have more of a stage play as John Hurt exit. And then we get my favorite line of the film, uh, which Kyle had uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, Charlie, why can't you ever just stop me? And it is when he is killing John Hurt um, by stabbing just a, like a two foot <laughs> machete through his, yeah. through yeah, his chest brutal. and heart. Yeah, it is so brutal. And, because he, he even says something just really, he says, oh, I'm not your brother after um, John Hurt gets, goes all Shakespearean again. He's like, well, I'm not your brother, guy, and I'm just going to stab you. Um, but anyway, it, Charlie finally gets him off him, and he's just, why can't you ever just make me stop? And I think not only is that so Arthur, but now we have another dimension of the film, like, Arthur is super intelligent. Like when he gets when when you see where where or how Arthur dwells, he's got many leather bound books. Many he's a learned man, and he, he, even though he is turning beast in his melancholy hills, um, even Arthur may know that he's he's got to go. And now I I, I think even Charlie. Is like, yeah, dude, you you you're never gonna relax, ever, you know. Yeah, this this could be the moment that Char it 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 it, it awakens in Charlie. Oh, I need to do this. It, it was a question of, do I have to do this? Will I do this? It, it's a range of those questions, but I think it's in that moment. It's like I have to do this, but I don't know how, and it's reinforced in the the raid. Where, where it's like a mirroring. I, I love this about the movie. It opens up with a a burned down house, a massacre, a, a rape and murder. And then here near the end of the film, when uh, Arthur and his companion Samuel and, um, and and them go to the the Stanleys, and the same crime is about to unfold, rape, murder, burn this house down which which has all sorts of symbols this this kind of charred terrain like again a house represents kind of defiance of the chaos violence of of nature and that this is civilization uh and to have that burned down to have that failure of it uh being encroached at the beginning of the film and here it's about to unfold again um I would just, uh, because you yeah. brought that up, I would just like to bring up that um, we are going to rank rape and murder on this show for the first time ever. Um, I think what is going to separate it from the Hopkins, the, the Hopkins massacre, and what is um, about to ensue to the, the Stanleys, I think it's actually worse to rape and murder on Christmas than it uh, is on just a normal Wednesday, you know, because I mean, it is a Christmas a film. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is that you just, you leave people alone on Christmas. You get to them the day after I, I would even settle for Christmas Eve. No big deal, you know, but this is a Christmas film and this is when this is going on the, the actually their Christmas dinner is, is interrupted. And, um, You'll have to tune in to find out how that plays out, but he, but Kyle's right that more rape and murder. Now, what's going to happen? Char well, no, and, and and it awakens in Charlie, and he, you know, you know, it awakens in him. Maybe it's a Christmas miracle. I don't know, <laughs> um, but uh, he, 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 it, it's it's simple. It's not even. It's said. It's it's just a moment where he just walks in 
pulls his gun out and shoots Samuel in, in, off, off of Martha and then shoots his brother twice. And, you know, it, it, it culminates to, uh, you know, Danny Houston's Arthur, uh, which we haven't mentioned in my name, but actor name, but Danny Houston is a uh, presence in this film. I think he is immaculate. And, and talking about that, giving that character layers, a, a kind of understanding, it's like a disconnected understanding. I know what I'm doing is wrong, but I can't stop it. Like, I can't stop myself. He needs to be stopped by somebody else. He can't stop himself. And so that's why he asks Charlie. That's why he posits to Charlie. He challenges Charlie. Um, and that's a difficult thing to portray in, in a performance and in a character because he is a monster. He is a beast. He is, he is gone. But he's aware of it. And that's hard, uh, that's hard to portray. Yeah. And so with that, you know, he stumbles and wrecks this garden, which has its own symbolic meaning. And sits there, and he just asks Charlie, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? And that's an interesting question because we're, it's not it's asking Charlie specifically what does he do now, but Charlie is a representation. That, you know, uh, Ray Winston, sta- Captain Stanley, has declared to civilize this place. I want to civilize this place. But he's not the one who does it. He's not the one who stops the crime from happening. To the, it is Charlie with his gun and violence and it's a it's it's a marriage of civilization is a marriage of agreed upon violence and a measured use of violence in order to control the chaos of human nature and the chaos of physical nature and the chaos of the landscape and 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 the act of civilization and that's where the film culminates to asking you the important question where do you sit in responsibility in the civiliz- civilizing nature of of modernity? And that's what in the West is generally about that. And that's what's fantastic about the proposition. It puts it in a different place, but asks the same questions because it's kind of a universal thing in history. Yeah, and I think a lot of people would be bothered by that ending even though you get what you're supposed to get i i think the cold out i think the the question you know it's not for everyone you know a lot of people prefer a little bit more and i think that is all and i would argue for me that's what it's that type of conclusion that type of storytelling that puts it as one of my favorite westerns of all time. It's 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 a dark poem with a shitty ending that is beautifully painted before your eyes um, from from the start of the, the the film to its conclusion to its cold out. And man, I can't recommend this one enough. I, I really what? can't. It's the ambiguity, man. The amb- ambiguity requires you to have maturity in your viewing to uh, to like understand what's what that feeling is. You have to wrestle with that feeling. If you're uncomfortable with the feeling, you have to ask yourself why. And we've talked a lot about that on noirs that I did. Like we, we're we're now doing obviously the proposition westerns, the western focus. And I'll tell you this: the the proposition is not even close to being the bleakest ending of the westerns that we we have. Like it that if that tells you anything about some of the movies we're talking about, th- these are movies that are challenging. They're challenging your perspective, your assumptions, and proposition does that. And not only that, but you, a lot of you listening right now, could not live in the west. That's oh, it's, it's, no way. <laughs> a lot. It There's would be. No way. <laughs> it would be so hard. And I'm not even one of those people. Oh, if you didn't have Wi-Fi, what you do? Like you just. I don't think you would know what to live meant to survive. Like that's like it. It wasn't about having fun. It was about I don't. This wolf's not going to eat me. This. But we're not going to get attacked by a tribe of some sort because just of how brutal the west is and i and i it's got to be up there with in terms of immersive envi- in, in in environment to to put you in it's it's it does its job just about as good as any in in the genre um i would say so um sir 
another pleasure. What do you, don't you got?